Hello everyone and welcome back. So what I'm going to do with this video is play you through a sample turn of Wing Leader victories 1940 to 1942 just to give you an impression of how all the various bits and pieces of this game go together and interact and also what a turn looks like. Um, I discussed in my previous video that we were going to do a Eastern Front scenario with the Russians attacking a German troop concentration and the Luftwaffe attempting to stop them. So I have set up the scenario and this is what your average game of Wing Leader will look like. Um, I have crowded everything in because with my hand for scale you can see the map is quite enormous. Um, but thankfully because this is a ground attack mission most of the action is going to happen at lower altitudes. So what I've done is I've laid out the wing display, the aircraft reference cards, the various help sheets and the board uh, with the aircraft, the targets and a little bit of cloud as specified by the scenario. Now way up here in this corner you've got a space for the position of the sun. Now this is very important because if your aircraft are able to maneuver into an advantageous position where they are up sun from their enemies, it makes the opposing squadrons um, have a much more difficult time trying to spot you and it also gives you an advantage when it comes to taking them by surprise. So getting an up sun position is, is very, very crucial in this game. And rather than rush headlong into an attack, it's often worth spending a turn or two trying to manoeuvre your squadrons into a sunward position. So here we have the wing display. This is used to keep track of your individual aircraft squadrons and to track their status. So I'm just going to look at the Germans. As you can see, that is their unit ID. That is their alert state counter. So Aircraft which are coming in on an attack or are not expecting to meet opposition um, are considered unalerted. And when I say coming in on an attack, I mean um, offensive reconnaissance or escorting a bomber squadron. You're there to be prepared, but you're not necessarily aware of um, enemies in the area. So you usually start unalerted. Of course... Um, the Germans in this case are alerted because they're expecting the Russians. Both squadrons have an intercept mission. Um, both squadrons are veterans. They have expert pilots. They have loose doctrine, which is the more advanced of the two. One of them is low on ammunition, you'll note. Now, the reason for that is, in order to give you a scenario where you get to see a little bit of everything, I played out the first couple of turns first because the... Um, the setup in this scenario had the contending aircraft starting quite far away from each other. So I wanted to plunge us in at a point where the air combat had just begun. So the various squadrons had closed in with each other. The Russian bombers are closer to their target. So you might get to see a bit of bombing if they live. We shall see. So the reason our German friends here are slightly low on ammunition is because they have already engaged their Russian opposite numbers. Now, moving up to the Russians, you can see that um, that's on the wrong side. Unlike the Germans, they have green or inexperienced pilots and they're hamstrung by rigid doctrine. So those are the bomber squadrons. They have strafing missions. Um, given the inherent danger in this scenario, the Russian high command has decided that the Sturmoviks are not going to bother with bombs. They're here to knock out infantry and disrupt artillery positions prior to a Soviet ground attack. So it's going to be a strafing run only. And up here you have their escorting fighters, who in terms of the composition of their pilots are not much better off. Um, things have already begun badly for them in turn one. Um, I'm just going to shift over to the map. You could see a squadron of BF-109 fighters has dived on what is now an empty square but it used to be occupied by this Soviet squadron here. Now, they didn't suffer any casualties from this sudden German surprise attack. Um, out of the sun, of course, the Germans came from directly overhead. But what their attack did was it broke the Russian formation. Now, formation becoming broken is a very serious matter indeed, because what it means, to all intents and purposes, 
you have lost control of that squadron. You can no longer give it orders. There are no ace pilots or a high proportion of veterans, so they can no longer attempt to reform. All they can do is split off in dribs and drabs and try to survive or try to return um, to base. In game terms, they're out of the fight, and that's a real blow for the Soviets because four German fighters pounced on a squadron of 16 Russian aircraft. And although none of them were shot down, through the simple act of degrading their cohesion, the Germans have taken them out of the fight. Not only that, by diving through the escorting fighters from up sun, the Germans have positioned themselves beautifully to dive onto those Soviet dive bombers directly beneath them. Or sorry, ground attack aircraft, I should say. Of course, all is not lost for the Russians, because a bit further on from that diving flight of BF-109s is another full squadron of Russian fighters. Unfortunately, they have not yet seen the Germans. They have been alerted because a fellow squadron on their squadron radio net has been attacked but they don't yet have the situational awareness to cope with the German squadron. So whether they'll be able to intervene when the Germans dive on that lot in the next turn remains to be seen. Just to complicate things for the Russians, their Sturmovic squadrons have reached the point where they're going to begin their dives to attack the German infantry and artillery positions there. So they are committed and the presence of those German fighters leaves them with a horrible choice. Do they break off to evade, in which case the Germans have successfully spoiled their attack run? Or do they persevere and hope, hope, that their defending fighters will be able to keep the Germans off them? Now, I've decided that I'm going to play as the Soviets would have done in the summer of 1942. The motherland is in danger, they have their orders, they're going to carry them out, which does mean bravely sticking to their posts, making their attack run, and, well, if the fighters don't successfully intervene on their behalf, then God help them. Just to make things a bit worse for the Russians, another flight of German fighters, which has arrived a bit late on the scene, is coming from the opposite direction, right towards the point at which they'll pull out from their attack run. Now that counter there, the vector counter, is where the German squadron has been ordered to patrol. And by sheer bad luck for the Russians, the German squadron's vector is right across their approach path. So they may be able to make use of that broken cloud overhead to escape once they've made their attack run, but it's going to be bloody. In the worst case scenario, They'll be mauled by those fighters from above. And then if any survive to make their attack run in any sort of cohesive shape, they'll emerge to fly straight into that lot. But let's see how it plays out. The Russians have had a very bad first turn, as I say, with half of their escort being chased off by the German fighters. But things may change. So the first thing that happens in a turn, and each turn follows a set of phases, clearly defined phases, where first the raiding player, i.e. the Russians, then the German player, the defending player, attempts to carry out these steps. And what you do first in every turn is you attempt to tally or spot an enemy squadron. Bomber squadrons never attempt to tally uh, an enemy squ uh, fighter squadron simply because they're not equipped to engage them. All they can do is carry out their bombing mission and defend themselves if attacked. Another good reason why bombers cannot um, attempt to tally enemy fighters in any meaningful way is not only does it not affect their own readiness, but they're more often than not on a different radio net to their escorting fighters. So even if they did spot the, fight, the Germans first, they would not be able to warn their fighters. So they're completely dependent on their own fighters spotting the Germans. The Russians are going to attempt that now. So I'm just going to zoom in on the tally roll here. That indicates that you roll a single dice. And you add the various modifiers. Now the Russians are 
five squares distant from the Germans and they've just rolled a two. This is not very good. That does not apply. Neither does that. They have no friendly squadron left to radio in. They're not veterans. In fact, they're green, so they suffer a minus one. So they fail to spot the German aircraft, even though those four German planes went in and scattered their sister squadron. They haven't yet clocked them or they haven't yet figured out what's going on. So they do not see squadron Q. Not a good start for the Russians. The Germans, who are desperate to try and stop the Russian bombing attack, that squadron is going to try and tally that squadron of bombers. Same thing, same sort of modifiers. So the German side has just rolled a three. They get a bonus because they're a veteran squadron. And because the distance to the Russian aircraft is only three, they have rolled a, f a total of four with modifiers, which is high enough to tally them. So what this means is the Russian squadron is now spotted and the Germans can mark them with a tallied token. Now that means that come the movement and combat phase, that squadron, that flight I should say, can now attack that squadron. The other German squadron is too far away. It's a maximum of nine spaces to try and spot things and that's through clear sky. So they are still proceeding to their vector point, but they have no idea that the Russian planes are here yet. So. That's some relief for the poor Russians. The next phase is the movement phase. And there's a very particular move order based on initiative and the situation that your aircraft is in. So the first to move are dogfights. Now, of course, dogfights, by their very nature, are not standing still. You're talking about large groups of aircraft tangled in a crazy series of personal duels or... Um, wingmen and leaders trying to gang up on isolated enemy aircraft but they're constantly in motion and it's often described as a sort of swirling fight so dogfights in this game would normally be moving sideways or losing altitude there are no dogfights so that is skipped the next aircraft to move are escorts which is our friends here now, unalerted escorts have only two movement points on the map and they have to follow their original course if they have not tallied an enemy squadron. So the Russians are pulling closer to the German fighters, but they're not yet able to engage them effectively. So following that, it's the bombers. Now, whether or not these Russians are aware they've been tallied is irrelevant but they're going to begin their dives to bring them in contact with the German position. The second wave of bombers still has some distance to cover, so they're going to remain at their altitude. And so you see what there is happening here is that the Russians are following a preset course towards their designated targets down there. Unalerted fighters, well, there are no unalerted fighters at the moment. Also, aircraft that have been tallied, once their movement phase is over, the squadrons which tallied them can then move, even if it allows them to move outside the regular turn order. So that's a huge advantage to tallying someone. You can basically start following them. Um, the BF-109s are alerted, which means they have three movement points. They also have an extra movement point because they dived last turn and they're going to continue diving this turn. So in order to pursue the Russians, they're going to go one, two, going to turn. Turning is free within a square unless you turn 180 degrees, in which case it costs one of your movement points. So one, two, make their dive a bit shallower, three and four. So these poor unfortunate Russians are about to be bounced.
and the very last people to move are alerted fighters. Now, this fighter squadron is alerted, and it moves three spaces, but it has not yet tallied any enemies, so it's just going to continue on its pre-arranged course. They can see their own ground troops, and they can see they're going to have to dive beneath the cloud layer in order to reach their vector. But in terms of situational awareness, they're not yet aware of what's going on there in that they can't see it. They know that a fight is underway because they're on the same radio net as their companions over there. So now it's the combat phase. Direct fire flak attacks would normally take place, but ground targets have very weak anti-aircraft, and so you literally have to be on top of them before they can shoot back at you. So there's going to be no ground fire yet. Um, there'll be no bombing or strafing yet because the Russians have not quite got there. So now the only combat that we resolve is between this diving squadron whoops, and their intended victims. So what the German player will do is looking at his own aircraft data card, he is at altitude band 1, which means his speed for a hit and run attack is 5, plus 1 because he's dived, so 6. He does have the option of engaging in a turning fight as well, or a dogfight, where his turn rating is 5, but if he chooses to do that, he does not benefit from the diving bonus, so it makes more sense for him to get into a hit and run. The unfortunate Russian IL-2s, their speed rating is 3, their turn rating is a diabolical 2. So actually, in a sense, it really doesn't matter. The Germans could either boom and zoom, or they could engage them in a turning fight. The odds differential would still be the same. But to keep it thematic, the Germans go for a hit and run. So their total is six. The Russian total is three. I'm going to have to do some marking here. This is the air combat results table. The first thing you do is work out the combat differential after you've applied modifiers. So the German had, Germans had a total of six because they dived. They get another one because their squadron is veteran. It's taken away because their unit is a flight and not a full squadron. So essentially the German rating remains at six. The Russians start with a base of three. Their squadron is green, so it's reduced to two. And they are defending using rigid doctrine, so it's reduced further to one. So six minus one, ouch, is five in favor of the Germans. You can't go any better than a plus four in the combat exchange table. So I'm just gonna leave that quarter turned dice to mark the Germans. I'm afraid the poor Russians are going to roll on that side of the table. So rolling the dice. The Germans have rolled a one, which is great news for the Russians. The Russians can't evade. It was not a bounce because it wasn't quite out of the sun. The attackers do have expert pilots, but they do not have gyro gun sights. So amazingly, despite their superb setup, the Germans do not actually shoot down any of the Russian bombers, but they're breathing a sigh of relief. The Russians shoot back. They roll a five, which is an awful lot better. Um, but they don't have any positive bonuses except for their aircraft defense rating, which is rated as zero because of their non-existent defensive armament. So rolling a five yields a zero as well. So miraculously, despite everything, uh, despite the huge advantages in the German setup and approach, and this is where the frustrations of the game sometimes come through, uh, not a single Soviet aircraft has been shot down. Phew, this is wonderfully bloodless for the Eastern Front. 
So the German ammunition counter goes from minus one low to minus two depleted. The Russians don't normally track ammunition being bombers, but because they did choose to shoot back, they have to suffer a reduction in their available ammunition and that affects their ability to strafe. So that will have consequences for them when it comes to bombing. The very last thing that happens is the administration phase. Again, it pertains only to this moment of combat here. Now in the administration phase, you check your cohesion to see whether your squadrons manage to keep together. I'll roll for the Germans first. They roll a four, but they were probably wishing they rolled that earlier in the game. So, oh, they have to roll two dice for this. They've got a ten. Their squadron is veteran, so it's up to eleven. They were the attacking side, twelve. They are marked with a depleted ammo marker, so they're back down to ten. Now, they've rolled seven or more, so they suffer no disruption. Whereas the Russians... They've rolled a seven. They've suffered no losses, but they are green. They're not on the attacking side and they are marked with a low ammo marker. So with five, they are bombers, so they manage to keep it together. They suffer no disruption. That, despite the brilliant setup, was actually a very, very badly handled bounce for the Germans. And if I were the Russian player, I'd be breathing a huge sigh of relief. It means my poor boys actually have some chance of getting through this. Now, because the light bombers are formation aircraft, they're not the sort of thing the Germans can dogfight. They're going to have to form up and come at them again because they're proceeding in a bombing formation. So uh, it's very much a slash and run. Um, the Ru they could have forced the Russians into a dogfight if their formation had broken, but because the formation is not broken, the Russians are able to decline a dogfight, and it just forces the Germans into the awkwardness of trying again next turn. So, I've gone on quite long enough there. I will wrap this up soon. Um, if the Russians had attacked the ground targets, the basic stats are, that's the anti-aircraft rating, Zero means, well, you can shoot, but your odds of bringing down an aircraft are pretty low. SO means that they're soft targets, so they're unprotected, and if you hit them, they squish easily. The four and the three are the number of hits that both units can absorb before they're considered destroyed. And those numbers there are how many victory points they're worth if they are knocked out for good. It will be interesting to see how the rest of the turn plays out, but I realise I've been keeping everyone for quite some time now. So I hope that's give you an, given you an idea of how the game works. That was a single turn. These games usually last anything between four to ten turns, depending on how the scenario plays out. So once you know what you're doing with this game system, you can play it within the space of an hour easily. And um, we will carry on playing it. I will see how this engagement turns out. And I might well put up a third video just giving my sum up thoughts and also giving you a bit of a blow by blow as to how things went. If you want that level of detail, if it turns out to be an incredibly bloodless and let's face it, quite dull mission, then maybe I shan't do that. But um, the crucial questions for both sides are, are the fighters there going to get a chance to have another slash at those bombers before they make their attack run? Are the Soviet fighters going to manage to intervene at all? Will that second squadron of IL-2s achieve anything? And are the reinforcing Messerschmitts going to enter the game in time to make a difference? Of course, all these questions are of huge relevance to the poor fellows sitting here, staring skywards and hoping that none of that ordinance is going to end up being turned in their direction. But in terms of how everyone is, the Russians are not looking too unhealthy. 
Yes, their lead strafing squadron is low on ammunition, but they can still get a few shots in at the ground targets if they survive. Um, they really need their fighters to get stuck in, but that may not happen uh, soon enough. For the Germans, their situation's fairly desperate. Their one flight, which is doing all the work, is now desperately short of ammunition and may not be able to remain in the fight much longer. It'll then be up to the second flight to get in, and probably the advantage in Soviet numbers being what it is, they will probably have no option but to engage the bombers and just try not to get shot down by the fighters. So there we go. Tough choices for both sides. I'll keep you posted on how it goes. Hope this has been of use. Um, feel free to post any questions you have, things I haven't covered, stuff like that, and I'll be happy to try and answer them. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.